Hi everyone, welcome to Goodness by SK here on YouTube. I'm Sherry and today is gonna to be podcast number nine. Today's gonna to be a big one, I think. Um, I've kind of been putting off filming this, but I realized I really needed to just film this podcast because otherwise this episode was going to become incredibly long um, because I feel like I have a lot to talk about. I have two finished objects, one of which I am wearing. I have two brand new to you whips that I cast on in the new year. And I also have an update on my cami number nine. And one quite very boring acquisition, but exciting to me as it relates to the blocking topic that I uh, went into last time. Before we get into everything today, I also wanted to ask you guys, because on my winter knitting plans video, I had mentioned that I really wanted to finish my blouse number two for my favorite things knitwear before the winter season was over, so I would have it going into the spring. And a few people commented that they also had blouse number twos on their needles that they were also trying to finish and just kind of kept putting off and they would be interested in a knit along for that. And so I just wanted to put out to you guys to see if you would be interested in, maybe not blouse number two specifically only, but would you be interested in a knit along for the months of January to April to finish a blouse from My Favorite Things Knitwear? So that could be blouse number one, blouse number one light, or blouse number two. If you're interested in participating in that, can you just leave a heart emoji in the comments? And depending on the input from this, then I think I will try to come up with some prizes and kick that off within the next week or two. I think personally, I really need the motivation to just finish that up. I have been, yeah, it's not even on needles right now. It's just kind of sitting in my closet waiting for me to come back to. And I do want that piece, but I'm in no rush to get to it. So I figured if we all knit along, maybe create a group chat, that would give us all motivation. Another topic I just quickly wanted to touch on is I did a community poll uh, on YouTube a couple weeks ago asking for especially like brand new beginner knitters, but just newer knitters in general, what do you struggle with the most uh, with getting started and really like picking up and feeling confident in knitting and overwhelmingly the response from that was people really struggle with pairing yarn and patterns together especially if the yarn called for is not available in your country or it's very difficult to get or yarn is too expensive and you're just not sure uh, what direction you should head and I can really relate to that because I had that on my very first top-down sweater the yarn I needed wasn't available in Europe I had no idea how to sub that out all the recommendations I was getting on yarn sub didn't really work for me and I just felt really confused because I didn't understand yarn in general so I ended up just paying the shipping and duties and ordering it from the States but all this to say, um, part of my knitting goals for this year is to really help newer knitters or just any knitters feel more confident and really show that we're in this together and we're building a community and sharing our learnings with each other. And so I wanted to ask you guys, what tips would you give? Because I think I'm going to do a series of videos on this topic. Uh, helping knitters um, with their skills but this is the first topic I really want to cover and so obviously I have my own thoughts uh, and approach to how I handle this but if you have any recommendations for how you go about deciding how to sub out a yarn on a pattern or how to even pair a yarn you have with a pattern because you're not sure you want to use this yarn but you're not sure which pattern it should go with can you just leave a comment below with your thoughts on this and what tips you would give new knitters and i am going to compile this all into a video potentially a series of videos which i will come out with uh, probably starting in february so i would love to know everybody's thoughts on that 
Okay, now that we're done with uh, that intro section, let's really get into the knitting content that you're all here for, starting with finished objects. And, you know, typically I take notes for these episodes to prepare, but I don't tend to reference them a lot as I'm recording. However, for this episode, I have many, many notes on my iPad because throughout the last few weeks, I've just been jotting down thoughts, especially as they relate to this sweater, uh, which is my first finished object. So this is my Salty Day Sweater by Veronica Lindbergh or Kudo Vakika on Instagram. And I think this pattern has really been everywhere lately. I see everybody knitting it, it's gorgeous. Um, I'm gonna start with the fact that what I really love about this. <laughs> so I think the pattern itself was so well done. It is completely clear, the instructions are excellent, there is a corresponding YouTube video to take you through all the different sections, uh, which is beautifully done by the designer. So especially if you're intimidated by doing any sort of textured sweater, I think this is a great starting point, especially because you learn a lot of really valuable skills in this. So. Uh, it is a conti contiguous knitting project where you have the back panel, you come up over the shoulders, and then you join in the round, which is a great skill to have. It also has German short rows, uh, which allows you to raise the back of the neck up so that you don't end up with the back of your sweater uh, riding up. And obviously it has all this beautiful texture. So you learn, you know, simple patterns with yarn overs and um, knit and pearls, but also uh, in this section here, a little bit of cabling, but not too much. So it's not overly intimidating. And it's nice when you actually have a video that just clearly walks you through exactly what is needed for that pattern. So from that standpoint, I would say, you know, you're not gonna get much better than the way this is written, the way it's structured, the tutorials to go along with it. So from a design perspective, I really love this and I can't, you know, go, I could go on and on forever about how much I love this pattern. Also, the yarn I used is the Gerarum Natura Gilead yarn in the color Goland. This is actually a case where I subbed out yarn. So the pattern originally called for a lace weight and fingering yarn held together. So a mohair and a fingering uh, wool. I didn't really want mohair in this. I, a lot of my sweaters, almost all my sweaters include mohair in them and I just find I'm a little bit over it, one for the cost of having to buy a yarn to hold the fingering with, but two, I just don't want all my clothes to have this um, fuzzy halo effect. And I didn't feel like this pattern really needed the mohair to go with it. I really wanted just more of kind of a rustic, easygoing feeling sweater. So I decided to sub it out. It did say that uh, sorry, and it wasn't a fingering weight. It was actually calling for mohair held with double Sunday or pure gint, I believe, which are already DK weight yarns. But on Ravelry, it says it calls for any DK weight yarn. And I know from my own experience that those yarns held with mohair are actually a little bit heavier. So I wanted to um, pick something that was closer to a worsted weight. And that honestly, for me, just comes from a little bit of experience of having worked with the yarns before. So I knew I needed to go up and I really wanted to try a brand new yarn to me, which was Durerum Natura. I've never worked with it before. So it is a 100% wool merino. Uh, it is... 270 grams, I believe. Oh, I can't check on my phone. Uh, 270 yards for 100 grams. And I bought four balls of it. And this is literally what I have left. So this is two grams worth of yarn. I use pretty much every bit of it and I weighed my swatches because I have two of them and it ended up being about 20 grams in there. So um 
yes, <laughs> I uh, was really cutting it close with this. Uh, as I was knitting with the yarn, I wasn't 100% sure how I felt about it. It was a little bit scratchy, um, but that did block out very well. And now it's quite soft, but still has that more heavyweight uh, textured feel to it but it's very soft uh, on skin and I haven't noticed it bothering me at all. So there, pattern, yarn, very happy, feel like I made solid decisions on both of those and I really don't have anything bad to say. Now, <laughs> Let's get to where I went wrong on this pattern. And the caveat being, I am 100% at fault for all of these things. It has nothing to do with the designer or really the yarn I chose. It's more the decisions that I made as I went through and not trusting myself that when I felt like something was wrong, I didn't listen. Let's start with my very first mistake, which was gauge. So this pattern is knit on or called to knit on five millimeter needles, I believe with um, 17 stitches by 24 rows. When I first gauge swatch for it, I ended up getting the pre-blocked gauge after blocking, which was 19 by 20 or vice versa for the rows. Um, and so I swatched again on, I think, six millimeter needles, and I did get gauge on that, but I, for some reason, questioned myself and decided maybe I just didn't stretch the first swatch enough. I, you know, didn't kind of stretch it into the four by four shape, so let me block it again and just double check if I should use the original needles or size up to 5.5 or six. So I did that, I stretched out my swatch, I did end up getting gauged the second time around and decided to just stick with the original uh, needle size that was called for. That turned out to be a mistake. And the reason that I say that is I could feel as I was working through the body that this was going to be really tight. Uh, I tried it on pre-blocking. It was very close to the skin, essentially almost negative ease. So when I finished the body, I decided to wet block it and stretch it out and see how I felt. I did that. I definitely got much more of a, a feeling of positive ease. And because I had gone so far and already done the whole body, I decided to stick with it and finish the sleeves. So then, <laughs> When I finished the sweater, I wet block it again. I stretched it out to the measurements called for in the pattern, which for my size, which is a size small, was meant to be 112 centimeters bust, uh, 37 uh, centimeters from the underarm to the hem, and 47 centimeters in total arm length from the underarm to the bottom of the sleeve. So I did stretch it out during blocking to get those measurements. First sign that something's wrong is if you need to stretch the yarn within an inch of its life. During blocking, you really shouldn't need to do that to get the correct measurements. So I had to really, really pull it to actually get to the correct size. So that right there <laughs> tells me something is wrong, um, but the sweater's done, so I need to keep going. So I stretched it um, and yesterday I measured because you'll see in the B-roll that I insert that the sweater does have a bit of positive ease, but it's definitely not the 15 to 20 centimeters that it's meant to have. So when I did the final measurement, I have a, so my original bust size is 88 to 89 centimeters. And the size small was meant to have 112 centimeters uh, bus circumference. And when I measured yesterday, I was just at 102. So definitely 
you know, 10 centimeters less than it's supposed to be. I still got positive gauge of about 13 centimeters, but I didn't hit what I wanted to. Ideally, I would have been much closer, if not over the 20 centimeters. Then for the underarm that was meant to be 37 centimeters, I was at only 33. So I can tell with this that the sleeve is too short or it's not too short. It's just, it really just sits at my um, wrist bone. And I was hoping it would go down more to the middle of my hand so that the cuff would sort of fold over. And on the body, um, or sorry, that, that was the uh, measurement for the underarm. So definitely on the body, um, it is sitting at my hip bones, but I wanted it to go over. And then for the arm one that was meant to be 47, I got 44. So I'm about three centimeters off. So essentially then I didn't get any of the correct measurements in the end after blocking, even though I stretched as much as possible. So I should have listened to myself originally when I was questioning my gauge and it's a lesson for me in the future that I never want to stretch my gauge swatches too, too much. You should obviously be stretching them a little bit into shape, but if you have to pull it a lot, you should probably be changing your needle size. And so maybe I didn't need to go all the way with a six millimeter, but I for sure should have gone with the 5.5 millimeter to just open up the stitches a bit and give more ease to the overall garment. Cause I, do you think now seeing the final measurements, the size small was the correct one for me. I did pick the right size. I just didn't pick the right needle size. So that was my mistake. And that's one of the biggest reasons that I'm not 100% happy with this sweater because I do love the look and feel. Uh, I think it's a beautiful design, but it didn't give me the look that I wanted which also then explains uh, issue number two for me. So that would be this neckline here. Uh, you do a bunch of twisted rib rows, you fold over and then you bind off and sew down. And originally last episode I was saying, maybe I would just um, actually do the bind off while attaching at the same time. I opted not to do that because I knew I needed to get a bit of stretch out of it and I was worried I wouldn't be able to get it over my head. So I decided to wet block and then sew down. And then I just sewed every second row to the, the stitch on the collar. But if you look at the pattern photos, this neck is meant to be much more open so that it sits much more down here. And you can see for me, this sits quite high. It's almost like a little mini mock neck. And I think the only reason that happened is because of my gauge. So also a learning here is I think with the twisted rib, I'm finding it quite tight and it doesn't look exactly like the pattern photos. It, the pattern called for three millimeter needles, but I think in this case as well, I probably should have sized up if I'd gone to a 5.5 millimeter or six millimeter on the body, I probably would have done 3.5 or four millimeters for the twisted rib because it is quite tight. So that is also making the neckline feel tight. It's not the worst thing in the world. I think it still looks good, but I, I wanted it to be that looser feel, as with the sweater as a whole. So those are pretty much my main thoughts on this piece in particular. Uh, it was my last finished piece of the year. I cast it on October 1st. I finished it December 29th. It took me almost a full three months, uh, which I think I got off to a really quick start at the beginning and then got distracted by many other projects like my Storm Sweater Junior and all my gift knits. So that's the only reason that this took a bit longer to finish for myself. And the yarn in total cost me uh, 62 euros, which 
if I had actually sized up, I would have had to buy another ball. So this would have been closer to uh, 80 euros uh, for a total project cost, which isn't that bad because I think if you bought this in retail, this would easily be over 100 euros uh, retail cost. Uh, and this is a yarn that I think is really worth the price and I will definitely buy again. Then for blocking, I also did the drain and spin on this again in my washing machine. I put in a towel to the washer just to help soak up some of that extra water and this took less than 24 hours to dry. So <laughs> game changer for blocking. Everybody commented on the last video saying they have blocked every type of material. I think only one person had an issue and it was very specific to their washing machine uh, kind of not handling the drain and spin properly, but everybody else commented that they have had only positive experiences for small delicate pieces, especially mohair, they'll tend to put it in a laundry bag, which I think is a good idea, but for sweaters, they just use the drain and spin on a low cycle. And so now I'm going to be doing that on everything going forward because it easily saved me a week in blocking time. I've checked my notes. I seem to have touched everything on this sweater. If you feel like I missed something, just leave me a comment and ask. But yeah, this is my Salty Day sweater and my final project of 2023. Then the next finished object I have is uh, an Oslo hat, which is the first one I've made in a while that is actually for me. So I made this in size small. And I mentioned last time, I was a little bit worried about the yarn choice. So I had paired the Sadness Garn Sunday in Pine with uh, Isayer's, I forget the color number, I think 68, which is also a green, but it's a little bit more of a olivey green color. And I had said, you know, the mohair, was giving these kind of speckles that come across a little bit golden. And I wasn't really liking that when I started, but now that I finished the hat, they're so subtle that I don't really notice them. And I think it actually adds a little bit of dimension to this hat. So I'm actually quite happy with it. And I think it goes perfectly with my camel color coat that I have. So this will probably be the main hat that I wear going forward. I will say for how many Oslo hats I have made for other people and one for myself, this was my messiest join. So the way, if you're not familiar with this hat, um, the way it works is you knit in stockinette and then you fold up when you hit a certain length, you sew down the uh, bottom to the part of <clears throat> the hat where you're at. And then you knit about two centimeters extra, turn your work and then knit up. And this allows you to then fold your hat and have this beautiful finished piece. So you can't really tell anymore, but when I did the sew down of the folded uh, cuff, yeah, it was very messy and it, I kind of had twisted it. I wasn't paying close attention. The yarn was hard to see. It was nighttime. And even though I had on my neck lamp, I, yeah, it wasn't really working for me. So I did a very poor job. I was very worried that when I would get to the end, you'd be able to see all the little twists. But after blocking, this seems to have worked out. I can't even tell anymore. You know, it does look a tiny bit twisted with where the stitches sit but nothing that <clears throat> nothing that anybody else would notice i also noticed once i went to do the bind off yeah that i had dropped a stitch <laughs> uh right there so i noticed when i had pulled all the stitches out to 
uh, close up the top that I had a stitch that wasn't sitting anywhere. So then I just had to sew that in a little bit. It looks a tiny, tiny bit messy, but it worked out and probably nobody will be looking at the top of my head. Though Dutch men are very tall and maybe they will actually notice it if they're standing above me, but hopefully nobody else would. Overall, really like the combination of these two yarns together, the Sunday and the Sayer silk mohair, I think worked beautifully. That is Sayer mohair probably now is my favorite mohair. It feels like butter. There is no itchy properties to it whatsoever. It is wonderfully soft. The only downside is, uh, at least at my local yarn store, Stephen and Penelope, it was 12 euros, which compared to, you know, a knitting for olive, which is eight or nine, it is more expensive. Though on a small piece, I think, you know, you're not buying a sweater's quantity. So if you just need a ball or two, that's probably one of the best options out there. And I highly recommend it for the silk mohair. So I think this hat just feels very, very beautiful to the touch and I am quite happy with it. The only thing I don't love is I decided again to go with a size small, which is what I've knit for myself in the past as well. And now having made a few medium hats and tried them on as gift knits, I really prefer when the hat has that little bit of extra room at the top. Uh, I think it just looks a little bit more casual. And that was what I was hoping for, but I only had one ball of the satin and pine, and therefore I, you know, I really ended up with not much left in the end. So I couldn't have gotten a medium out of it, even if I had wanted to without buying another ball. So it's fine. I knit the size small, it's close to my head, but it does fit. And I have plans to knit a few other Oslos, I think before the end of the season. Therefore, I will always go forward with a size medium now. So that just means you really do need two balls, even though you don't use a lot from the second, you will need to have that extra ball to dig into, which I believe most people have said. Uh, in the end, this took me 13 days to finish. Typically in Oslo hat, the last little bit has taken three to four days, but it wasn't my only knit. And actually it sat for about a week just for the decreases because I didn't feel like doing them. I was really focused on my New Year's cast on, which I'll get into next. And I didn't really want to come home and work on decreases and magic loop. So that's the only reason it took me a little bit longer, but typically this hat is quite a quick knit if you're just focused on it. And the yarn in the end cost me 20 euros and 75 cents. So well worth it. Okay, now let's get into my brand new whips. And I am so excited to talk about this first one. I had said that for my New Year's cast on, I was going to cast on the Monday sweater from Petite Knit, and I did that. So this is how far I have gotten, and I'm recording this on January 13th, I believe, and yeah, I am through the raglan increases. I have joined in the round and just made a tiny bit of progress there. And I will say I am loving the color of this piece. So I picked, um, let me pull it. So I picked the Yelholz Udspindery Dance Basold 8-2 in the color copper. And I paired it with knitting for all of soft silk mohair in claret. And I think these two are a beautiful match together. Um, it's really, I was hoping for a tiny bit more of a rust color. This is a bit more red, but I think it's going to look so nice. Uh, and it's unlike anything I have in my wardrobe right now. So this is a brand new to me color. I don't think I've ever worn it before and I just really really want this piece so I 
been a pretty monogamous knitter uh, and I think it's my first time also doing a raglan in a while. I guess my cumulus tea sort of counts as a bit of a raglan, uh, which I did last summer. But in terms of a true just like in the round, full yoke raglan, I have not done a sweater of this construction in quite a while. I've mostly just been doing drop shoulders the last year and a half. And I forgot how long it feels like this takes. So even though I know I've only been working on it two weeks and that's really not that long, so I literally cast it on January 1st, I worked on this a lot and it just was like, oh, okay, one more, one more round. And then you finish that last round of raglans and then you realize you still have a bit of body increases to do. And at that point, I think you're at 350 something stitches in a fingering and mohair together. So each round feels like it takes a lifetime to do. But I'm now through that and I love that feeling when you just put the sleeves on hold, you join in the round and then it's basic stockinette for days and days and days on end. Uh, and I think this is just a perfect couch knit for the winter uh, to come home to. I'm really enjoying the details of this raglan. So it is a three stitch raglan and then just a one by one rib neckline. I will admit I haven't tried this on yet, but I don't typically have any issues with petite knit and I did get gauge on this one exactly. So maybe today I'll try it on. Maybe I'll insert B-roll. We'll see. But I feel pretty good about this. I'm honestly not concerned it's gonna fit. So um, I may just keep going and hope for the best. Or maybe I'll try it on. Uh, the other thing as I was working on this, it was my first time having to fix a make one left that I had missed. So that was a cool process to learn for the first time and I ended up with exactly the right amount of stitches at the end of my raglan increases, which you gotta love when that happens. It's just the best feeling to know that you didn't miss any because you're going on and on and on for so long that you're just pretty sure you're gonna be a stitch or two off by the time you reach that end point. And when I counted yesterday, I was bang on. Then I immediately dropped a bunch of stitches, had to go back and fix, still ended up with the right amount. So yeah. Um, I don't know. Does everybody do that? Just like hope for the best at the end of those raglans that you actually have the stitches you're supposed to, or is it just me? I was a little bit worried that the yarn for the Dawn's Basold would be scratchy because when I did the sample or the gauge swatch and blocked it, it did have a quite rustic toothy feel to it. But as I've been really knitting with it, especially paired with the mohair, I haven't noticed that at all. Um, it's actually been quite an enjoyable experience. So I'm not worried about that anymore. Of course, we'll see once I'm wearing it close to skin, it might be a sweater where I have to wear something underneath it, which typically I don't really have wool sensitivity, but I've never worked with a yarn with quite this property before. So maybe I will, but yeah, working with it at least on the needles, I haven't really noticed any issues and it's been quite a pleasant experience. This has been really my main whip for the last few weeks. Uh, the only time that I have been working on anything else is just when it gets really late and my brain has kind of been dead because I didn't want to work on the raglan increases and mess them up, I would switch to a simpler project. But overall, that's really all I've been <laughs> touching uh, because I'm just enjoying it so much and I would really like by the end of January to hopefully have it off my needles so that I can wear it. Then my other brand new cast on, uh, which I decided to do very last minute, and I guess actually I cast it on right before the end of the year. So I think December 30th, maybe even the 31st, no, the 30th. Um, I, I don't even know how this came about. I think I just saw, so it's the Berlin Scarf by uh, Suzanne Muller or Paula Strict on Instagram. 
And I think I had just come across it and it looked interesting. And then I saw that the yarn was alpaca. And I was looking, I was like, oh, I could really use a scarf. I've kind of realized I am missing some of my wardrobe because I gave away all the Sophie shawls that I've made and all my other sweater or all my other scarves uh, that my mom has made me are very long and big and therefore not always practical in Amsterdam where it's not that cold but you just want something around the neck and since my turtle dove shawl wasn't really working out and I still need to go back and correct that I just wanted a really simple scarf that I could work on so I was considering buying yarn for this Berlin scarf and I looked up, it calls for, I can't remember the exact name, a sudden garn, I think alpaca borset or something. And it's 11 euros per ball and you're gonna need six balls of it. So we're around 67 euros plus shipping. That seemed like a lot for a scarf. I mean, I usually spend that on a sweater. I didn't think I really want to go there. Then I remembered I had my brushed alpaca that I had bought for uh, the soft loop sweater. And I've talked a little bit in previous episodes in my winter knitting plans video that I decided not to use the specific yarn for that sweater because I mostly don't like the color paired with the Gepard yarn that I bought. But also I just don't really love the way that the thickness of this is working uh, for that particular pattern. I think it's going to kind of eat up the texture that's in the soft loop sweater. So I've been trying to find a purpose for this yarn that doesn't involve pairing it with anything else that I would need to buy. And I was looking at the uh, projects from other people on Ravelry and saw that quite a few people had used this Drops brushed alpaca and just held it double. And I have eight balls total of this that I bought for that sweater. And that probably won't get me to the full length that is required for this, which is around 180 centimeters. Uh, but it should get me to around 160. And I may shorten a little bit more because uh, you'll see in the pattern that you also add these tassels after. So the way that it works is you do a provisional cast on and then you come back and you uh, pick those stitches up, you add the fringe at the end. Um, so you need, I think they call for 30 grams left to do that fringe. So there's a chance that I might need to buy a little bit more yarn for this to really get it to the size that I need. But these balls are two euros and 15 cents each here. So even for eight balls, Right now, I've spent 17 euros on this versus the 67 that I would have spent for the yarn called for in the pattern. So even if I need to buy another ball or two, even three, I'm still well below what I would have spent uh, for the original yarn. So that's well worth it for me. And I am really liking how this is working up double. It just has this beautiful thickness to it without being really heavy. Uh, I also really like the color. I think it's going to go with all my winter pieces. And I love a scarf that you work in the round. So uh, I actually didn't realize that until I bought the pattern. I just assumed you would be working back and forth and it's in pearls. So when I found out it was in the round, I was pleasantly surprised. The only downside for this is it calls for seven millimeter needles. And I only have one set of seven millimeter, which are my Addy Click Turbos. One issue, they're very blunt, so they're not very nice to work with because the tip isn't as pointed as this. And then the other issue I have is um, they're the longer one. I think they're 13 centimeters long. So then when you add the 40 centimeter cord that you need to join it in the round, there's no way that you can actually like close the loop to work with it comfortably. So for this, I opted to go down in needle size to six millimeter because I had the lace uh, shorties with the pointier tip uh, that I could easily connect to the 
40 centimeter cord. So that is what I did. That means my gauge is definitely off on this, but it's a scarf. I don't really care. And yeah, that probably also means my length will be a little bit off. So I do imagine I will need to buy a few more balls of the yarn, but that's okay. So this has been, yeah, I guess on my needles also for about two weeks. I just work on it here and there at night. I'm really not in any hurry for it. It was also just meant as a simple stockinette piece that I could work on where I felt like I'm accomplishing something and this can be a long-standing piece. I honestly don't even need it this season. So I'm just going to keep working on it on the side, see how far I get. I measured yesterday, I'm already at 42 centimeters, which is roughly how much <clears throat> each ball gives you. So yeah, I made it further than I actually thought I would because I didn't expect to work on this a whole lot. And I'm enjoying it. And I think also the style of that scarf really aligns to what you're seeing out in retail right now. So many of my coworkers and friends have very similar scarves just in multiple colorways that are in a very similar looking yarn and style. So I could see this maybe being a pattern that I would knit again in multiple colors. Uh, yeah, maybe a multicolor one, a single color one, uh, and just have that to work on in the winters rather than the Sophie shawls, which I have worked on in the past. Then the final whip that I have been spending time on is my Cami number no. nine by my favorite things knitwear. So let's fix this. <laughs> In my holiday plans, uh, so I had a week off over the holidays between Christmas and New Year's, I had originally had the best intentions to actually finish this piece and I did finish the body. I added the, um, okay, so let's take a step back. The <laughs> way that this works is, um, you do a folded hem on the bottom. So you switch to a smaller needle size, then you knit a few rounds, you do a purl row as your folding edge, and then you knit a few more, and then you're meant to fold it up and sew it together. So it looks like this in the end, which has a bit more of a professional finished feel to it. So in the pattern, it says before you start on the smaller needles to do the um, kind of finishing edge to fold up, you are meant to add a thread so that you'll be able to see from the inside when you fold up and sew down where you need to sew it down. So because this is already fingering weight yarn, this is the knitting for olive merino in bottle green. I use just a very thin DMC thread to put into that row with the expectation that I would be able to see it when I folded it up. Then I got to that point. I was sitting at home ready to <laughs> fold it up one day on a sunny day so that I could see everything nicely and realized from the inside I could not see that thread at all. So from the outside, the right side, the stockinette, I could see where the thread was, but when you're looking at it from the wrong side where you need to fold up, there was no way. So I did, I think, 20 stitches and realized they were all over the place. I definitely wasn't working uh, from the same row to sew up and it was looking really sloppy, which for this piece, I, I really want this to be as nice as it can be to finish. So I decided to rip back and put in a much um, heavier, so I actually used the putty merino from my Cardi Jumper which is the same weight as this. I put that in because it was white, assuming, okay, I'll be able to see this clearly. And started again to knit down, to do the purl, to knit again, to fold up. Even with that thicker thread in, you could barely see it from the wrong side. 
So as I was, I decided last night, I'm just going to put my neck light on, turn up the bright lights in the living room and finish this, which is also like 300 stitches. So, I mean, this is a couple hours of time to sew down. I decided to just bear down and do it. And on every single stitch, I would have to stretch out the yarn to try to see where that white thread was. So it was a very time consuming process, one that I am in no hurry to repeat. And you can see like the bottom is kind of janky and folding in on itself right now. So I'm really hoping this will block out and lay a little bit flatter because there's absolutely no way that I'm going back and doing this again. I'm just putting it out there, it's not gonna happen. So I will live with however it is. But all this to say, when the pattern says, oh, I suggest putting in a thread so you'll be able to see where the fold up edge is, don't just take it as a suggestion. <laughs> Definitely do that because otherwise, I don't know how you would be able to tell where you actually need to sew that down from the wrong side because it's very hard when you're working um, across the row to figure out where that needs to be uh, bound off. So you definitely need that thread, but also make sure to not use too thin of a thread um, so that you can actually see it and make sure that the color is contrasting enough that when you pull apart a little bit, you will be able to see it. Because yeah, I think otherwise you, well, maybe people are better better at this step than me, but I feel like you wouldn't stand a chance of getting this sewn down in a nice clean way. So I'm very happy that that part of this cami is done. And now I can move on to the armholes and neckline, which is just one of those pieces where you're like, oh, it took so long <laughs> to get to this part. And now these finishing touches I know are just so finicky and precise and they will look beautiful on the finished garment but i don't really have any desire to do them right now so yeah i think this will be something that i'm not gonna be finishing right away although maybe one day i'll just sit down and be like okay let's get through this i just want this off my needles but i think it's gonna be one armhole put it aside, another armhole, put it aside. We'll see. I don't know. I, I was feeling really motivated for this piece and now I'm kind of over it. The other thing with this is I noticed when I went to change to the smaller needles that I had been working on the wrong needle size the whole time. So this is supposed to be done on three millimeters and I did it on 3.25 because I keep forgetting as part of my Chow Gu set that it didn't originally come with three millimeters. So when I am reading down through the pack, it's 2.75, 3.25, 3 3.5. And I keep assuming that after 2.75 would be three, but it's not because it didn't originally come with that. So I have those stored on a different side of the case. And so, yeah, I made that mistake, same as, well, for a different reason, on the Oslo hat for my friend that was neon yellow, I was supposed to be on 3.5 and knit it on, or what was I supposed to be on? Yeah, 3.5 and knit it on 3.75. Like I keep making this mistake lately, so I need to be much more mindful of what needles I'm picking out. I think because I have a slightly larger bust for my frame, it won't actually be a huge deal on this camisole and maybe I can shrink it a little bit if needed. But I'm just hoping now it won't be like positive ease because I did really want the negative ease that the pattern calls for. Also good to know uh, if you're knitting a size small, the pattern calls for three balls of knitting for olive. And originally I was wondering, okay, am I really going to dig into that third ball? Because it doesn't seem like that big of a piece. 
but this is all I have left of my second ball having finished the body so definitely you need that third ball you'll probably go through maybe not half of it for the finishing touches of the rest but perhaps so definitely make sure you don't skimp on the yarn for that final subject is my like I said very boring acquisition which I was influenced from Bethany of Well Love Knits, who is also an expat uh, living in Europe. She lives in Belgium with her husband. And I was watching her video on five essential knitting tips. I'll link it in the description. And she mentioned that she uses a um, laundry tub for her blocking so that she doesn't need to use her bathtub because she was really monopolizing it. And I didn't even know that those existed. I mean, of, of course they would, but I've never thought about it. And I always have the same problem. Like I'm either having to clean out my sinks carefully uh, so that I can, I know that they're sterile enough to put my knits in to block. And only a few of our sinks actually have an, a stopper to hold the water in or I have to clean out our bathtub to make sure I can block my nits in there and then that just seems like a waste of water because I don't need that much. So I bought this, I think it was 12 euros um, and it folds up, <laughs> which I'm hoping over time it will actually fold up a little bit easier, but it just folds in on itself uh, it also has a plug in the bottom, so you can easily let the water out that way. And this has already been a game changer. So I've used it a few times in the last week to block pieces. It fits my sweaters uh, really nice. It seemed a little bit small at first, but this is perfect too, because then I can use our laundry room, which uh, just had a super tiny sink in it that wasn't big enough for sweaters, and immediately put the item from there into the washing machine to do the drain and spin. So boring acquisition, but very practical and exciting. And I highly recommend this. I will also link it in the description for where I bought it. But I think most of you guys are watching from North America. So it's not all that helpful for you. Two final topics. I had recorded my Knitting Goals and Intention video for 2024 and posted that a few weeks ago. And I really wanted to thank everybody for the beautiful response to it. Uh, it's worth going back and watching. I won't get into all the details of it, um, but I had posted a survey to start doing some research on the digital product that I wanted to create. And so many of you responded to that. I will be sending out uh, a message to start setting up those interviews. And I'd also posted about wanting to create more community and in real life knitting friends. And so many people also reached out to set up coffee dates or virtual uh, knitting dates. So yeah, I just like, my heart was warmed from that. I actually have lots of thoughts after filming that video and seeing what it has just brought to me by putting myself out there. So I actually think I'm going to do a knit and chat video about that. If you're interested, I know it's not a topic for everybody, but I really wrote down everything I've been thinking the last few weeks and how positive I've been feeling since putting myself out there on that video. And I just want to share that in a bigger way. So stay tuned for that. And then the other thing I wanted to touch on is I have officially surpassed 2000 subscribers. Thank you so much for everybody watching, especially those that have been here since the beginning. I had mentioned in my last podcast that if I got to 2000 subscribers before the next one I filmed, I wanted to do a very small giveaway and so I am going to do that. I have picked five stitch markers from the Firefly and Notes uh, advent that I got and if people comment below with the tips that I asked for earlier which is you know how you could help other knitters to sub yarns uh, in patterns or vice versa 
If you give me a tip for that, I will randomly pick a winner for these stitch markers and announce it in my next video. So I will not comment or message you directly. I will only announce it uh, in the next podcast specific episode. And this is open to anybody worldwide. Just keep in mind that if you are outside of Europe and I ship these to you or outside of the EU, you may need to uh, pay uh, customs for it. But other than that, I will uh, send them to whoever the winner is worldwide. So yeah, these are beautiful stitch markers and I really loved working with them. So wanted to share that with you guys and also just use it as a thank you for everybody that's been here uh, supporting me because I've really enjoyed this journey that I've been on and it's really more than I was expecting. So that is everything for me today. Uh, thank you for watching. If you like this video, please comment and like it. And please don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications if you want to see new updates from me in the future. I try to post podcast episodes every uh, two to three weeks on Mondays and additional content um, throughout the rest of the month. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.